Hello and Hello. welcome. This is your GM in the Great Barrier, uh, broadcasting from the center of your entertainment galaxy. Uh, we are back for another session of Star Trek Adventures Aegis, our 22nd century campaign, uh, following the crew of the Aegis, a Daedalus-class vessel. Uh, for those who are interested in more specific or nitty-gritty bits of lore, we're getting into mid to late 2154 at this point, so it is actually coinciding with very nearly the midpoint of uh, the fourth season of Enterprise, just to give you a sense of that. Uh, but yeah, when last we left off, there's been an away team investigating Zoran Station, the outpost operated both by a Nausicaan chieftain by the name of Hoglul and the Tellarite Jogus Mining Corporation. And there's a Dilithium mining operation that is uh, also helping to develop an outpost run by the Nausicans, uh, one seemingly oriented towards trade and being a peaceful way station. Uh, however, the plans with the, uh, setting up this peaceful outpost have been greatly undermined by a plague that has uh, started to emerge. Uh, the away team has been trying to get a better sense of that, particularly with Dr. Lambeth's help, um, who has learned at this point that while there's there are some symptoms here that cannot be accounted for, that there where there is no signs of an immediate virus or pathogen of any kind that you would recognize, uh, there is definitely an increase. Er, well, there's definitely signs of. Uh, tissue damage from the uh, what would seem to be byproducts likely of dilithium mining, um, specifically like micro fragments of dilithium and other minerals, and that's leading to all manner of injuries, toxins. Um, it provides a partial window, but not all of it. Um, for the rest of the crew, everyone has been investigating the. Uh, possible causes and trying to get to know a little more about the outpost and perhaps the most productive investigation on that front might be that of uh, Mr. Sorrell who having had a uh, an encounter with the former mentor of the ship's chief engineer Aleska Romanov um, a Vulcan man by the name of Cardin uh, they've resolved to create some sort of diversion that might allow access to the mines, or at least the uh, the infrastructure between the mines and the outpost that would uh, that might give Saral further insight here. Uh, yeah, otherwise uh, investigations have continued, basically showing the. The filters are not in great shape here. They're being overworked by whatever prob uh, whatever problems are allowing the um, <coughs> allowing the extent of this contamin uh, contamination and pollution. Uh, meanwhile, the captain is very steadily pursuing um, some way to try and resolve the more, shall we say, diplomatic aspects, or perhaps business would be better. Um, Long-term problems. Yes, playing a, a playing it very much, uh, taking Star Trek in a much more closely to its uh, horn blower roots, shall we say? We're going back to cowboys, yeah, of sorts. Back to its pulpy, pulpy center. Mm -hmm. So where we are going, we don't need no prime directive, <laughs> and you won't have one for a while. Even then, it's not like people listen to it. Let's let's go ahead and just get back into things from here. So, uh, let's see. I suppose first and foremost, um, let's touch real quickly with uh, with Shira and uh, well, actually no, Romanov is presently away. So let's we should set that scene aside for now. Um, Yes, I have ideas for other starting points. Uh, would anybody like to volunteer a scene or ask about something that they might be doing? Because we can definitely work 
with something from there. Um, I have a question. Yes. Uh, I also have something. It's more of, um, I'm currently going through legal work right now. Um, is there anything in the contract that I've noticed? Um, I'm well, going through a fine tooth comb through this. That would definitely be something to discuss. So we can we can have a scene with that. Would you? Yeah. I guess with the. Uh, well, you tech... can see Romanov. Romanov went off to go check on the engine and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. With the uh, uh, I guess. So if memory serves, you were recalling the, uh, you'd recalled some of the away team in order to, what, uh, like, give a report of some sort? I had an sort idea or... until I, until I re, until you uh, explained again the situation regarding how things are docked, and now I don't think I need that. So, um, but at the very least, at the very least, it's good, it's a good cover story to whatever the hell Soral's going to do. Because we won't be there outside the outside of the doctor. The doctor can be explained. Um, I believe Specialist Layton is also still on the station. Yeah, but he's a specialist. He's he's a crewman, not a not an officer. So he's a lot. I can, I can ch- chuck that. I can I can do that. Do something with that easy. As opposed to a, like a bridge crew officer or something like that. We've really moved into the cowboy era of Star Trek, haven't we? Yes, yes we have. Excellent. Yeah. Soral um, will acquire from somewhere like a sixteen gallon Stetson. <laughs> yep. A uh, person in a person in the vac suit behind you uh, has a phase pistol leveled at you. We always were. <laughs> God damn it! Probably a Romulan too. <laughs> you mean your 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 buddy, your your brother? <laughs> My twin. The evil twin. Oh, always, let's not let's not know. run that always trope know, again. Yeah, how many how many bad plot points can we get in one episode? Come on, let's try this. <laughs> how how many can we recycle? Oh, I mean, dear. given given current Star Trek, a lot. I mean, transporter accidents should be rampant at the moment. It's like just begging for an evil twin episode. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, feed, yes, feed the GM plot bunnies. Great. Okay, well, tell you what then. Let us let us start off a scene aboard the Aegis whilst uh, we wait for uh, well, uh, whilst a few things come together there. Uh, let's see, Captain. Would you prefer to do this from the from the ready room or the conference room? Um, we're going to do this in the ready room. All right. Is it uh, just you pouring over these papers, or actually, you know what? No, conference room works. Okay. And I'm gonna grab. I have Patel. I have myself. Um, probably a lot of pages, right? Certainly. This contract. All right. Uh, I'll grab. I'll grab a random crewmate. Just red shirt yeah. that carts in the occasional uh, stack of pages every so often. Yep. Fair enough. Okay. Why so, did you want to do all of this printed out? We have digital pads, Captain. <laughs> because it's better to look at things from paper when it comes to contracts. If you say so, cards in the next load. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh man, if only I could do a keyword search. Yeah, we enter in, uh, Captain, you and your executive officer, uh, as well chief science officer, are reviewing... Pages, uh, page after page of the contract between uh, the Nausicans of Zoran Station and the Jogus Mining Corporation. Um, as you pour through each page, uh, there are uh, there are several sections where Crichton has added notes. This is based on translation from what you've been able to um, get with the combination of what humanity knows of the Vulcan language and of what was available from a Vulcan database. Um, So there are a few notes on potential ambiguities in terms of uh, phrasing in different places. Um, A lot of it is broadly uh, for technical purposes. But uh, I will say, if you would like to give us the first roll of the session, you may do so with a um, 
let's call this reason and command. Um, and I mm -hmm. will say the, the difficulty in order to tease enough of this out, I think would be three. Uh, and I suppose if you would like before that role, we can allow Shira to enter in just in case you want yeah. to get her involved. Um, so otherwise it would be Patel assisting. Yeah. She'll, uh, before I make the roll, yeah, she can come in. Yeah. So. Um, Hello, Captain. Ah, great. Sure. Sit down and grab a stack. Uh, stack of what? She gestures to, like, the piles and piles of paper. Why is there so much paper? And this is the contract between the Chieftain and uh, the Zogus Corporation. And you want me to, uh, vaporize it? <laughs> Not yet, uh, Lieutenant. Simply to help us go over this and see if there's any uh, wiggle room or slights that the Zogus have uh, surely ignored in thinking that the Chieftain would uh, not pay attention to it. Well, that one class I took at the Imperial Academy on Andorian Law is going to come in handy with a it's... agreement between Tellarites and Oscans as she'll sit down and grab some paper. <laughs> Anything you find fishy, just mark it and we'll look over it. Okay. We'll look puzzled at the word fishy, but otherwise just start reading. No. I I don't imagine that the guard prepare, uh, prepared you with a full list of uh, human idioms and expressions. Probably not. No. Yeah. So, uh, Shira, you may also assist with command and reason. Um, I don't suppose. Ah, yes. I, that's that's the All real. Right. My real so at least this I'm is a science spend, and reason role. I'm going to spend a value um, because I have one specifically for this. Um, the line between disorder and order lies in logistics. Um, so I'm using my bureaucratic know-how as a word. Wow. Uh, diplomacy? Mm. It is a legal contract. Diplomacy it... is getting pretty loose here. I I think I would rule against that in this case. It would be much more like a specific law-oriented focus. Fair enough. Um, Alright. Then I'm going, if you guys feel don't mind, I'm going to spend a focus. Or not focus, a uh, momentum to get extra die. That's fine. Hey, I got one. That ain't hey. bad. So that's a five total. Yep. Oh, and then challenge dice. Ha ha, I get it back. Hey. Okay, so believe that I believe that said difficulty four in order to uh, in order to fully assess what you were dealing with, you scored uh, well, Captain, on your own, with the automatic critical success from spending your determination, you gained five successes. Shira added a sixth one, so that will give you back to momentum. Nice. And, uh, yeah, Captain, once you get through some of the more uh, technical terminology or uh, like a few phrases in terms of definitions... You gain a pretty good sense of what the contract requires. Very broadly speaking, um, the requirements for the uh, the requirements go as such: um, the Nosikans are expected to uh, uh, the Nosikans basically they own this claim. They were initially uh, the people that had found and settled it, and while Jogus might have had some room to contest uh, in the past, uh, there were, must have been enough of a presence here that they basically acknowledged that, yeah, you guys were here first. Um, what the what this does, essentially, is that the Nosikans have granted a lease, uh, something in the vein of a... Uh, they set it for what appears to be about a 50-year contract, or until such time as the dilithium has been exhausted. 
And there's an exit clause as pertains to that. Um, but the uh, during that time, the Nausicans permit access and reasonable accommodation in order to extract the dilithium resources. Basically, you know, take what steps you need to in order to do that. And there's an agreement to provide some amount of labor as well. Um, in exchange, the Tellarites are expected to uh, make some provision for, first and foremost, uh, guarantees of the safety of the station's inhabitants um, to pro uh, essentially help provide some infrastructure development or to uh, be, uh, essentially take some share of what profit they take in in order to uh, reinvest in station development with you know, some of it allowing for infrastructure that makes the mining easier, but other parts basically. Uh, the contract is negotiated in such a way that it's not just ter uh, allowing the Tellarites to make it entirely an extractive operation. They actually have to help with like port development and um, a few other sort of things that would allow the Nausicans to make this station a little more self-sustaining in the future. There, uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, the the Jogis make accommodation to um, help not only keep the inhabitants safe and help uh, develop a station uh, as something habitable, but there's uh, basically a broad agreement in terms of uh, or like there's a requirement essentially that changes to or adjustments to certain terms generally have to uh, receive accession of both parties in order to uh, reach that point there are outside of the um outside of basically if the dilithium vein ran out the only sort of exit for the contract is essentially if one side is proven to be um in breach of the agreement and it does sound like uh, uh, the contract does make reference to uh, an arbiter of some sort needing to make the decision there. Um, one of Crichton's terms basically establishes that uh, the the reference is a bit ambiguous. It's likely that they meant for a direct appeal to uh, probably the Tellarite government itself or some sort of legal service there. Um, but there are it is possibly a bit vague. So okay. Um, regarding the um, the requirement to provide um, livelihood to the uh, to the the colonists here or the miners here, does uh, is there how explicit is it? How how detailed is it? Or is it just a vagueness of mind, like the people here? So, like, does it include that? Is it just a requirement of uh, food, air supply, and uh, you know, commerce, or is it just in the vagueness of the wellness of the people here? It looks like there are allusions to uh, essentially uh, something uh, like. So health, bodily integrity, um, and beyond, uh, outside the basic, uh, that basic, uh, there's provision of some basic services to uh, help keep the, uh, to help keep the place inhabitable or like otherwise help build up the infrastructure to enhance its habitability. So the, I would say that like there are probably fixed percentages in the contract that establish how many resources uh, should go in at a minimum, um, mm -hmm. and it's the sort of thing where for a colony of uh, for the type of uh, outpost that they're building at Zorn Station, um, it would make sense. Uh, the station is maybe a little ahead of schedule in some ways, or it is. Uh, there's definitely a bit more of a buildup than you might have expected here. That 
partly might have been, you know, the station is has been a bit successful. Hogwall's been good at attracting uh, more people, or otherwise at least had the resources of his own to marshal some of that. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. Jokas has been paying him well to this point. Is there a... Um... Is there a cutoff uh, due to population numbers or um, outside sources or anything like that to, for them to no longer need to provide that area? Uh, the... A limit to, to the warranty, as it were. Uh, it doesn't seem like there would... Uh, like there is. Um, the... The way that this was... Uh, the way that this was set up, uh, basically the... The uh, Jogus didn't seem to care about the size of the outpost as much, so long as they were receiving a steady workforce and still mining the dilithium. Um, they provided a certain amount of uh, revenue from the dilithium, which, uh, in principle, it could be used to develop the uh, colony at a certain rate. But that doesn't necessarily it like. It'd be the sort of thing where you have this many resources to work with um, from what Jogus provides. Hogul might be bringing something else from the outside. Uh, if you recall, the uh, the administrator had said that they were building up faster or like bringing in people faster than they thought they ought to have, and uh, right. you know that is probably that reflects something that is outside of Jogus control. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, so if I push on this, he could say that this is, you know, uh, outside of my control and thus uh, I don't have to take care of it, essentially. Or could I use this as a, uh, <laughs> as a, uh, as a pillar to basically like, look, you're going to help out here whether you like it or not. Uh, um. I mean, you could certainly attempt that, um, but uh, I, I think it does give uh, Gant a little bit of wiggle room here. Okay. Um, you could see why the... I made an argument. Sorry. Yeah. What is the minimum requirement for... Pre uh, by the way, uh, I'm sorry for the other players. This is legalese, but I'm trying to figure out something here um what is the minimum requirement for dilithium before they could seek uh they have rights to seek uh arbitration uh zogus i mean uh let's see you mean what is the minimum amount that uh, like the like what? What is what? What is the limit before they they can claim that it's you know the mine is tapped out, and they don't need they they can break break the the thing, break the contract. Oh, I would say the uh, what uh, I don't have a specific number in mind, but the particular threshold would it basically suggest it be something long uh, after. I guess what I'm I guess I'm asking if it has some some leniency in favor of the chieftain or is it rather large it's um, it's pretty much meant to um this is going to go until the uh it, it would be more likely if the uh, from what you've read out um they'd probably extract m most of the dilithium in the 50 year window that jogus has okay if not all of it it depends on how rich the vein is and that requires getting in deeper. No. I should say, um, uh, Shira, if you likewise want to pose any questions here, then that is your purview. Uh, I'm willing for some questions. I'm just trying to find loopholes, man. Yep. I could just see her uh, antennae like drooping down. She's un she yeah. understands this, but. <laughs> So, uh, this is this is difficult. This is this is not the area of security she's good at. She's she's good at the stabbing and shooting part of security. So what was it, Lieutenant, that you were 
uh, making me- uh, sending a message about regarding Sol- uh, Sorrel. She says that she's looking through the paper, writing notes. Sorrel. Oh, oh yes, yeah, so she'll perk up a bit. Um, yeah. So he's a uh, ranged for a distraction to sneak in to an area where the Territes probably don't want anyone to go into, which is near the mining equipment, I think. She'll just nod. For this particular outing, I'm giving him a loose loose leash, as it were. There's something going on here. and uh, if, if there's something going on here more than uh, we can already see, then i like to know before it catches us in the face. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I need something strange on that station. How do you I'm mean? more inclined to think it's to do with the Tellarites than it is to do with the Norsicans. Pardon me asking, me asking, Lieutenant, but is that your security senses buzzing or more experience with the Tellarites? It's a bit of both. I haven't spoken to... Uh... Hoggle? Sorry, Hoglo. Hoggle. 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 Um, he seems a fairly straightforward person. Generally seems to want his station to succeed, and this is putting that in jeopardy. Whereas the Tellarites... Well, the ship has seen that they can uh, be sneaky when they want to. I would agree with that assessment. Ah, there is big yeah. fishing going on on that base. Romanov, glad Romanoff. you come in. Please sit. Yeah. He sits down. Yep. There's, there's yeah, a bunch has, of papers. Have some paper. Thank you. We're going over the contract regarding the, the colony and the uh, Zogus Corporation. But I would well, like your assessment as well. Uh, uh, I, I think somebody's trying to play somebody. And they're creating a situation to do that. Have you noticed any one that seems outside of the colonists or uh, Zogus? I'm not okay. sure, uh, but uh, they've got some uh, hydroponics which have been brought in by a third party. Yeah, that's true. Uh, um, I can't, I can't, uh, DM, uh, GM, I can't quite remember the. Uh, the... Kefarians. Kefarians. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, they've been done by the Kefarians. We didn't... Uh, I didn't speak to them while we were there. Interesting the Kefarians are out here, but hey, if they're trying to make a colony here, it makes some sense. Mm. Yes. Anyone else? Any other third party? Well, there's uh, someone Romanoff knows personally. She looks over. Yes, uh, my um, one of my professors from Alpha Centauri, the Vulcan private school I went to. Uh, and GM, how do I pronounce his name? Is it Cam? It's not Camden, is it? Cardine. Cardine. Uh, Cardine is here. He was more than just a professor. He was my he was my Sesma Bana master. Vulcan martial arts. He's a grandmaster. Oh, hmm. Patel. Uh, so he's going to provide a distraction so that Sorol can um, get into uh, the other area and see what's going on there. I believe that was the plan. Uh, I'm Patel's sorry. Patel's right? Yes, Patel's in here and he's listening carefully to this. He's a, wait. So the yeah. Vulcans were together. A, a a a wandering Vulcan martial artist is about to cause some sort of distraction on the station. Um, in order for uh, Sorrel so that's to our, our wandering Vulcan scientist. Yeah, he's, uh, IP, he's going full IP man on the station. Yeah, uh-huh. um, Captain, are, are we should should we, we be like going? That. Should we be going to? Two I get the feeling like, we don't we don't know anything about this. 
But in the meantime, yeah. Patel, could you look up on the Vulcan database uh, Romanov's master for me, please? Mm. Patel will go. Uh, will walk over to the console behind you and start pulling that up. Uh, I'll try to put in a query. You said uh, his name was Cardine. Cardine. Uh, Patel will momentarily engage away from this, yeah. but he's. Shows look back. He, uh, he. My feeling is, he was aware something was fishy as well, and willing to help. So, and uh, despite our current Vulcan's presence, a Vulcan decided to touch upon the Talrite border. You know, the, the ways of Vulcan grandmasters are sometimes beyond comprehension. I say this because I dealt with the I dealt with him for quite a long period of time. But he's probably here for a reason. GM, I thanks to my uh more or less adopted family, um has a lot of knowledge and certain all the knowledge as I do have. What do I know of the Vulcan uh martial arts and their masters and all that kind of their, that culture. Do I know anything about it at all? Hmm. Uh, I think that this would require another role in, or, in order to pull something up or I suppose sure. you could always try to spend momentum to obtain information if you had particular questions. Um, if you guys don't mind, mind me spending I one momentum. To... Just one for the moment. Go for it. All right, I'll spend one momentum. Uh, just give me a general... Is this sort of behavior common with those sort of martial artists? Because it seems to me like most Vulcans, unless they're scientists, tend to be rather conservative and, uh, you know, plant-eyed, plant-side. Yeah. Well, Vulcans of this era are particularly... Um, they do tend to err towards a very... Uh, conservative slant, shall we say. Um, yes, I see. They're certainly not, uh, yeah, they're not terribly involved. A part of that, at least, has to do with either uh, Dejer or at least, uh, it, if not Dejer rules uh, that the High Command has set up, then there are at least uh, some more customary elements that would make it very difficult for Vulcans to uh, integrate themselves into a particular society or to get involved. There are the odd few exceptions of uh, Vulcans that are uh, a little more starbound and do so from the uh, do so without particular sanction or of their own accord to see your own uh, Mr. Saral at this point, uh, but they are a very rare exception. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, martial artists or warrior monks traveling uh, deep space and being places for reasons, that's, I mean, if you had it, that'd be something out of a hollow novel, but those don't exist yet. Yeah. So it it sound it just sounds pretty weird. How long have you known your master, Romanov? I first met him when I was eight years old, when I began in the academy. I see, and you've been with him up to. Oh, I went uh, the equivalent of late elementary through high school at the academy that he was part of. And he was well respected by all the other Vulcan uh, teachers. Hmm. He took a small cadre of us and taught us Sasmana. I was the only human to, uh, to reach a certain level of the discipline. Impressive. So I can tell you I trust him. If he's here, he's here for a reason. He'll figure out a way to work with Saral, and he knows how to do things quietly, so Nurse, I trust him. I take it you met him as well, uh, Lieutenant? Craig, 
Uh, yes, I did. So. Your assessment of him? He's here for a reason. It's a very specific purpose. And he's not going to tell me anything about it. I think there might be one person he could tell. She'll look to Romanoff. Yeah, he wants to talk with me. Um, so he's very happy with what I'm doing now. So he wants to chat. Uh, but uh, like I said, it, it seemed an opportune situation. And Saral needs a slight distraction in order to get into what I believe is the Telluride controlled area. Is that correct, GM? Yes. Um, essential. Uh, he alluded vaguely to allowing, um, or basically giving Thrall the chance to access uh, the mining area, er, rather, an area basically, bet it, there's a transit area between the habitation and the mines. That's where, like, there's a lot of essentially airlocks or, like, uh, controls that are meant to... Um, you know, allow the miners to transition. There's a lot of life support equipment built into that section, um, environmental controls and the like. So that was his next destination for the investigation. And just and as... the Telluroids were unwilling to let him in for reasons, as I remember, right? Well, technically... Um... I was just, Azral was just informed that they would very likely object. And instead of asking to gain access, being denied access, and then still being found somewhere, I uh, thought it was a better approach to just Stumble getting caught before. wandering yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, and, and she'll explain that because Saral had explained it last Half, time. Halfway through, she'll just wave a hand and nod. I understand the, the general principle. He's trying to approach. There you go. All right. Well, let's give it an hour or two before you can make that uh, rendezvous. Romanov. Okay. Just so we don't have an awkward situation. Um, Shira, just for the sake of... Um, I had an idea, but it's probably a bit uh, excessive at the current moment. So for the moment, you can stay up here and uh, mind, the st uh, mind your station. Mm. But um, until further no until I need you again, um, Romanov. From what you can see of the station itself, I, go over with me about the quality of uh, the station. Well, the problem is the dilithium has shredded all the filters in the station. There's not enough replacement filters we'd have to try to jury-rig something. But that doesn't mean anything until the microparticles are stopped and um, the filtration system then can be restored and brought back online effectively. Right. So she I have some ideas. She, she just starts, like, underlining a few things that she's gotten, gone through this contract. I think, she, Go ahead. I think somebody's trying to create a situation to pull a fast one to seize control contractually. I don't know whether it's hap which side it's happening from, uh, but uh, you know, being out in the frontier, I've seen stuff like this where people try to she, take advantage of the situation. She shakes her head. If anything, there's a lot more suggestion. <sighs> From what I've heard from you and Shira and my own uh, other uh, investigations, it seems, if anything, quite the opposite. Well, you've got the contract. So you, you'd be the one to make that assessment. I haven't seen the contract. but She uh, just gestures through like the piles of paper. Feel free to, if you wish to uh, help oh, out. Oh, no, I'll, I'll leave the legalese entirely up to you. Uh, it just seemed like was an intentional situation you know somebody's you know if if this is all accidental it's a cascade of mistakes made made by a series of people it, or it could be that they've just built simply brought, bought the wrong filters just a bunch of cheap filters which they thought would 
do the job. Yeah, I, I can answer that shredded. right now. I scanned all the filters and checked them. Did they have the right caliber of filters, or did they buy cheap filters from Filters R Us? Oh, so Romanov, what you actually recall um, going through this is that the the filters that were in the sort of uh, the life support nodes that were like in the habitation area itself. It's not that they were bad quality filters so much as they aren't designed for the same level of uh, like scrubbing of mineral particulate. That they're not mining filters, is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, yeah. This was meant basically to recirculate the CO2 and um, you know, or like scrub rather scrub out the carbon dioxide and monoxide and circulate breathable air back through. Compare against. Use the computer to compare against filtration used at mining facilities like this. What's the difference between that filtration and the one they're using? Probably just density and the amount the amount of uh, fibers, probably fibers. Yeah, uh, but or, is it or whatever sci-fi equivalent? Yeah, the it would suffice to say that the layout would be very different, or there would be different elements to that filter um you would expect that the uh, for one thing the uh, like any of that filtration equipment would only be found in the mines anyway given that the any excavation has long since been done in this part of the outpost so there and there wasn't dilithium present where the uh Nausicans have set up shop um question uh gm mm -hmm. How good is dilithium? Like, how much of a half life do do they have, as it were, or whatever the equivalent? Oh. Once fresh in mind. I mean, dilithium isn't so much. It's not so much that it has a, um, not so much that it has like any radioactivity or a half life. So much as it is the ideal um, substance uh, that's been discovered to date. Uh, for regulating a matter-antimatter uh, reaction. Without these, people are basically stuck with uh, antimatter-spiked fusion reactors. And with that, the old, uh, the best speed you're getting is going to be warp 2. Um, right. Uh, question. I, I got knocked off again. I had a problem. Uh, I should be taken care of by now. I, I guess my basic question is... So the filtrate, the caliber of filtration was effectively not up to the job, right? Yeah, basic. Well, the the filters in the habit uh, in the habitation section are not meant to screen out the type of particulate, so they're not good for that. But they, in theory, they shouldn't be needed in that section. They're just meant to scrub the. Um, they're basically meant to scrub out the uh, carbon dioxide. There, uh, the mineral, per uh, any sort of uh, generation of excess mineral particulate or the dilithium micro shards that we've talked about, that should all be happening in a different part of the mine, basically. Right, and that area should be filtered. So something's allowing that filtration up here, which is shredding. Which is what Cyril's looking at, right, or trying to look at. Right, exactly, and that's yeah. what Camden is. Um, going to do a distraction for right right and then so uh gant is more worried about just the shipment time right he needs to get there a certain time um to get paid otherwise i imagine somebody else could easily undercut him uh for the moment romanov i want you to give me an entire uh give me an entire shopping list of uh things that need to be taken care of on the station that require repairs or of um ill repair okay that you've seen so far and I want do you that. want me to uh try to come up with a filtration solution however that's going to be irrelevant until Saral shuts down the source or identifies the source that we can i rather Saral find out the source before we make any sort of drastic measures um, okay certainly certainly you can think up something if you have the time um but i want that list in uh half an hour Okay, I'll work on that right now, then. Do you want to roll for this? We'll worry no, about just... that later. It could really yeah. just be an advantage that we create while on the ship, but I think that this yeah. would be 
This is going the background. No, this is this is me. This is me just giving orders to, for people to do stuff. Fair yeah. enough. Um, for the GM, I'm gonna look at supplies that we have, which would work as filtration in the same. You know, uh, this you said the sil- filters were like you know they're they're those kind you slide into place. So I want to use the existing framework. Essentially, I'm going to Apollo 13 it. Fair enough. Figure out what we have that works well uh, that uh, I could use. And then I'll game out the rest of the issues on the base. I'll get on that right now, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Um, Shira, I want you to think up, uh, give me solutions on ways of... um, Hobbling, or at the very least, uh, restraining a possible transport ship that might make a break for it. Um, but that should be the, our last, our last avenue. But for the moment, I just want some ideas of what uh, suggestions you can make. Sure. Yep, I'll start thinking on it. Um, look back as I'm heading out of the conference room to the captain. I trust him implicitly. He and his, you know, he and his fellow, you know, creators of the school, they sought to better society outside of Vulcan space. Also, I have a suspicion that I am part of a, let us say, uh, alternate group of practitioners of Sus Monarch. It's not usually taught to people off Vulcan. That's pretty so, sus. That's pretty sus. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Suspicion intensifies. Um, um, yeah, I will look over to Crichton. Crichton, I need you back on your station. Um, and I want you to keep a very close ear to the station proper. Any slight oddities or uh frequencies that are um that could be a signal of any kind i want you to pick it up and grab it or let me know at the very least it could be Sorol. Uh, patel looks back over mr creighton isn't here he is at a station sir i thought creighton was here i thought i, thought I heard they heard creighton creighton was here but Patel, okay oh I, i'm a little confused um, the, the, just seeing creighton everywhere <laughs> yep uh, no. it's been a long day sir no. He's in the uh, fucking walls. <laughs> I I I am everywhere now. No. I am ascending. All right. So she will say that in the communication thing then uh, in the communication town. Yeah. Uh, Cr- uh Crichton is indeed at a station but he has crashed from uh, a lack of caffeine now. So he is asleep <laughs> there. <laughs> anyway, that that's just a comedic aside for the moment. Yeah. Uh, so, um, what can I get of the? And then when I can next next scene, if you can inform me of what the hell is going on with uh, Romanov's, like if we hear background of Romanov's uh, teacher. Yeah. Oh, I I was thinking I would close out the scene since we've. Uh, yeah. I feel like we've done everything we can with this. Yep. Um, yep. But as Romanov and Shira go off to their other duties, uh, Patel says. Uh, Captain, um, about this carding person. Yes. Yeah. Um. I know. I know, I know. Romanov trusts him implicitly, but. Uh, so these, uh, he was indeed. Uh, we do have paperwork uh, from Alpha Centauri back on the day when he was an instructor. He was part of an exchange program, essentially. Uh, the high command revoked his uh, t- uh, revoked the visa that allowed him to operate there some years ago, sir. She just stops writing writing the paper and just kind of rubs her chin. Oh. Find out, find out the reason why. Go as deep as you can. Aye, sir. And with that, Patel will leave, and we'll let the camera pan across your face. Anything as far as uh, Colonel Sharp's expression? Um, certainly 
firm and just like curious because that is certainly it's something she also kind of expected because that's what it kind of feels like in the situation that there's gonna be a third party here yep. but at the same time it's just like this is an interesting step yep. um so yeah it, it's it's that it's that knowing knowing firmness but also like curious mild curiosity in those eyes yeah okay well, well, as we pan away, uh, we cut back to Zorin Station, uh, the uh, the outpost run by the uh, Nausicans and partly operated by the uh, Tellarite Jogus Mining Corporation. Uh, despite the despite the inhibition that the recent respiratory plague has put on this place, there is still some activity, of course. Uh, some Nausicans, uh, a handful of the insectoid Kefrayans about, and for a rare moment, there are a couple of humans and a Vulcan operating through, or, well, rather, a couple of humans and a couple of Vulcans in different places. Uh, I feel like this would probably be a good time to touch base with the doctor right about now. Um, and Saral, if you would like to have a scene with him as well, then we could always bring the party together. Otherwise, if you think he'd be doing something else, we can follow up with you in just a moment. Uh, would you have a preference before we... Uh... Um, I don't think I'm anywhere near the doctor, and he oh. didn't get has to do his whole McCoy spiel last time, so I'm happy to step back. All right. So, uh, yeah, doctor, we would cut back to you. Uh, at this point, the medical tent that you have set up, uh, the sort of plastic-like layering has been... It is completely up. Um, I don't think they ever resolved to send over an engineering team or other medical team to help you out. So unless uh, Special Slayton decided to come back this way, it was just you setting up all of your equipment and stuff. Just no, I... I did offer him to to bring stuff, like offer nurses yeah. or whoever he needed, and he said no. So, yeah, I don't think I quite said no, but kind of a case of there wasn't too much we could. Like we needed to know what we didn't yet know what we need to treat people because right. we didn't yet know what the problem was fully. So I think he was setting up like standard medical away kit stuff. Um, and put like stuff that he would have got from the ship, I think. Yeah. Um, there, there's probably room for like a couple generic portable uh, lab type equipment, so things that would allow you to test some blood samples uh, with greater uh, accuracy or rigor that might allow you to do more than what you could do with the, uh, the equipment that the uh, doctor had on hand. Or the Nausicaan doctor, rather. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, outside of that, there's been, I suppose, just a general sort of zen about getting everything uh, set up, or the relative piece of putting something together. I guess there's a question for you. Would you say, um, would you say Dr. Lambeth is a man that likes to work with his hands and... Uh, in it like put things together in this manner yeah i think he's reasonably practical like that he'd probably prefer to put something together himself well yeah do i need to make a roll to set that up then i i will not force you to do that um i will however as you get things set up i will have uh dr mecklen drop by um uh, an older grizzled uh nausicaan man who uh despite his gruff exterior, uh, does seem to have at least taken a bit of a liking to you between your disdain for some of the Vulcans and uh, general medical proficiency. He's He feels very refreshed to have other talent around here right now. Fancy bit of equipment you got here. Yeah, still getting used to it myself, but it's... I mean, this is the kind of stuff Starfleet can get you, apparently. Star, Starfleet. Yeah, some fancy human thing. 
Uh, so, uh, so it's but the pay's no good. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, that's refreshing at least, uh, even if it is a. I don't know. I didn't pay you for a military sword, I guess. Yeah, um, I'm not really, oh. but it's. I don't know. Uh, it's a it's a way to help people, I guess. Chance to um, yeah, get out, see more sites, build a name for myself, um, build up a reputation, that kind of thing. Just do a bit more on a larger scale than just running around the odd planet here and there and selling out services. Plus, this way I can you know help those who can't afford to pay. And I get to deal with stuff like this. Huh. Well, I suppose that's uh, reason enough. Everyone, fe uh, everyone feels the call in their own way, I suppose, to get out and do something. So tell me there, uh, Doctor, and do you prefer, hey, do you prefer just going by the honorific or? Uh, you go the full. Uh, what was the name? Lam Lambert. It's Lam Doctor Lambeth. Lambeth. Um, okay. Yeah, you can call me Danny. That's, oh. that's the uh, if you want to be casual, I guess. Doctor Danny Lambeth. That's a nice ring to it. Sounds a bit odd, actually. I mean, what well, Danny's a nickname. Um, technically, it's John Lambeth, but everyone calls me Danny. Your human names don't make any sense. I, I can't understand how you get Danny out of that, but... I looked uh, like another, um, there was another Danny when I grew up, and I was Danny 2, and then Danny 1 moved away, and so then I became Danny 1, and then Danny. He just, he <laughs> widens his eyes for a moment, kind of shakes his head, trying to keep track of the, uh, the, uh, the story that you're weaving there. All right, I, I look. I didn't ask for your whole backstory here, but well, I suppose you're welcome to share if you're going to help here. I, oh. I mean, would you like me to ask for your whole backstory? Would that make you feel better? I think I got that kind of time here. What do you? Th we're in a crisis, but I. Oh well, I guess if you ask nicely. <laughs> I yeah, I mean, we get you know, we can talk while we get this set up. Yeah. Um, uh, let me answer that question after I bring some blood samples here. You you can test for blood samples on these contraptions, right? Yep. Ah, uh, good. Then I'll I'll give you that. Uh, I'll give you enough of a backstory that uh, <laughs> to last can... long enough for the um, <laughs> for the blood sample to process. Yes, yes, for that. That whole task to roll out and all of that. Um, and the doctor abruptly turns back, grumbles away, and uh, goes back to his... The the medical shack, basically, that's set up. Um, so, a, a few minutes do... A, a few minutes elapse, and when he returns, he has several uh, vials in hand. Can I, can I come into this? I, I have a respirator. Well, hold on. Let me affix my respirator here. I, if this is a sterile thing, then, well, I can do that at least. Uh, fiddles with it for a moment. All right. Um, let me let me come in and join you here. Uh, if you, How do you get into this tent here? He's looking for the seam to try and press through. So, I... Guess like you, I'm um, had the same interest in getting out and seeing the sights. Honestly, it's more getting away from the home world. You, I'm trying to remember you. You, you didn't say anything about being from your home world. Were you? Were you there? Were you a colony? A uh, colony, yeah, Vega. Yeah. It's called. Um, not a great place, but it was home. And it's kind of like, yeah, built up a bit roughshod. One of the newer places that they tried to, uh, one of the new colonies that they tried to make all fancy, and then the funding ran out. And 
yeah yeah it never really got the full the full attention that some of the other ones got it's a bit of a mess to be honest but it was home yeah well at least i suppose you had the you always had the vulcans uh watching over your back even if it uh they were also looking over your sh uh, they were doing it just to look over your shoulder hmm <sighs> Nausicaa yeah. didn't uh, didn't get that experience. Which, to be fair, if anyone had tried, Nausicans and Dorians, uh, Rigelians, we we wouldn't have tolerated that. We'd have driven them off the world and out of the system long ago. Come to think of it, the Orions tried, but well, they paid for it several times. Honestly, I think a lot of uh, a lot of Nausicans have that same kind of drive to get off their world. And if we things weren't always on the edge of falling apart, or if we didn't feel the need to uh, constantly have to confront the harsh realities of this universe, then maybe we'd be out on colonies like that of our own. But. Uh, Oh, there's some nice places. There's enough of our world, which is difficult enough on a good day. And well, our history is full of times where uh, people made the stupid choice or the greedy one and plenty paid the cost for it. Uh, some awful wastes. In any case, where it's more often that what'll get someone out to see the sights is going off to conquer them. I guess your your people are fairly warlike. Is that what you're getting at? Because like we've, I mean, we've done our fair share of war, from my understanding, but it usually takes the form of deciding that a place is ours now and then doing whatever it takes afterwards. You know, all the kind of colony stuff. I'd say the, the culture's definitely uh, more friendly to, uh, to that idea. And, oh, every, uh, every other day, someone's looking to form a new uh, compact or hire out a new, uh, new army or even just pull together people for... Uh, raiding uh, privateers if they're lucky yeah i mean for, be for better or worse we've got a reputation now and well uh, uh, a lot of people go uh, a lot of people go out and join whatever fight they're hired to or strike out on their own and make what they can off the galaxy take take what you can get and yeah, well, if the pay is good, right? Uh, suppose so. Well, I guess is you're probably... not like that, maybe. He hands you. He starts handing you the samples as he realizes he's but just been monologuing at you a bit. I wanted to get out. I wanted to get away, and well, let's say this. I could, uh, I could have fought if I wanted to, but I'm much more the person that likes to stitch things together, work the problems. Yeah, working problems is good. It's always, I mean, well, working the problem part is middling. Finding the solution is is good. It's a good feeling. Yeah, even better when you actually help someone with it. Yeah. Uh, so he hands you some of the vials here. Uh, is there anything here we can? T I mean, you got these machines here. Right? Perhaps we can test for something else here. I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, let's 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 run some tests. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess you know that there's one sort of general bit of machinery that would be good for this and give you a more broad spectrum type of analysis. Um, if you would like 
doctor, you can roll um, a task for this. This is actually going to be a small extended task here, during which okay. we, we can interrupt some of it with uh, further conversation here. Uh, but this will be a magnitude three task, so the difficulty will be three. It will require reason and medicine, uh, and it will be a work track of 14. So in essence, um, if you succeed at these tasks, then um, you need to either, uh, you can, it, like the idea is basically to fill out the work track or score uh, three breakthroughs here. And once you do that, you should have the answers there. Um, in terms of the work that you do, there will be two points of resistance on it. So whatever you, roll on the work that'll take a bit away um but of course it does get easier as we go okay uh, if you'd like the doctor can uh dr mecklin that is can assist you here while you work yeah that would be helpful all right um, so uh let's see i'll also roll reason and medicine and he does have the complication range there, um, but not really, not really any talents to help you in this case. Right, and what? Do, how many successes do we need? Three successes to uh, to meet the difficulty here. You can use a termination. You can use more momentum to increase your dice numbers. Yeah, have we got. You good with me spending momentum? Just yeah, go for it. Right. Yeah, I'll do that then. Hopefully that should be. Enough with the assistance. Nice. All right. Oh, yes. Dr. Lambeth rolls three successes on his own, and Dr. Mecklin contributes a fourth success there. Uh, let me move this back to the roll log there so that everyone can see. All right. Yep. So that's some excellent work there. Um, go ahead, and you see in the, the same area where you have the dice roller, you see the challenge dice section? Um... Ah, it's like at the bottom of that dice roller. Thing. Yes, challenge dice. Yeah, so the you see the box that has the probably a number yeah, zero right now. Number. Yeah, can you? Uh, let's see. With uh, since you have a discipline of five in medicine, what I want you to do is, uh, let's see, two plus that that would be seven. I want you to set the challenge dice value to seven. Um, okay. Press enter, or the enter key on that uh, at once you set it there, and then roll. Uh, I've discovered this sheet is a little, uh, has a very slight error. Hmm. Try that one more time. Yep, that wasn't seven dice. <laughs> yep. It, it has a bit of an issue where um, if you don't go that way in terms of uh, setting up the... Uh, if you don't press that yeah, enter key after you alter, yeah, it, 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 it rolls whatever the last value of it was. And ah, okay. Yeah, so things I've learned. That being said, I won't complain. I really do like the Roll20 sheet, or mm. this particular version of it. Yeah. Anyway, so that is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 points of work. Uh, it's resisted by two, but that is still seven points of work on the um, on the work track, which takes us halfway through. That's seven out of 14. Uh, that is also enough for one breakthrough. So uh, the magnitude and the difficulty of the task now goes down to two. So very good work there. Okay. Um, yeah, you start uh inserting the samples into the uh in the parts of the machine uh the vials are thankfully of a uh they are compatible with the machinery that you have to run the uh or run the different sorts of general blood tests uh, there uh, they fit in neatly and with the uh, with Mecklin's help, he, uh, you were able to uh, insert them and start running the process. Uh, the device is set for a full run of more intensive scans than what your uh, medical scanner would usually be able to do, running through 
uh, pathogens, viruses, different environmental effects, uh, toxins, like basically a full spectrum analysis of the blood sample from the Nausicans here in order to determine what could be the process. Um, the machine is working very efficiently over these first eh, like several minutes um, as you start running through the uh, basically the full range of things that your machine can detect here. Um, so during some of this intervening time, uh, Mechlin will continue. Uh, I, well, I guess I gotta, uh, I can't help but ask. Now, now Starfleet's got the, uh, well, the Starfleet of yours, it's, I suppose, uh, when it gets out to help, it doesn't do so just on its own accord, or it's, it's got its own reasons or agendas, doesn't it? Yeah, probably. Been trying not to pay too much attention to the agenda side of things, but uh, you can't tell because of the respirator on, uh, at least completely. But there's maybe a slight change in tone, and maybe a little bit like if you were to look over to his face, a slight sort of uh, a few changes and crinkles that you haven't. Uh, that you haven't seen, um, maybe even a slight widening around what bits of his cheekbones are visible. Uh, and here I was expecting to get a, a party line type answer or something like that. You know, Danny, you're, uh, you're pretty honest. Uh, I mean, before I can give a party line, someone has to tell me what it is, and I'm, I'm not going to pay any attention to what they're saying for long enough to hear it. Ah, uh, oh. Are all humans uh, uh, this uh, frank about things? Probably not, but... Damn, I... I mean, to be fair, I'm not always frank. Um, sometimes people call me Danny, but I'm Tish. <laughs> I, I don't uh, I don't get it. Never mind. I, I like <laughs> I like the cut of your jib. That's the one human phrase that I know. And I don't know what that means, but I've heard it's a positive. Yeah, same. Uh, it's probably an old Earth history thing. Ah. Uh. I hope, uh, I guess I hope that uh, at least more of the people on that ship over uh, of yours there's uh, are a little more like you. As uh, let me say, the uh, people with that attitude, uh, so long as you know they're they're doing the paying attention bit of the uh, of the job, I'd say we're a bit more likely to figure out what the hell this is all about mm. yeah. speaking of figuring out what this is about uh, give me one more reason and medicine roll there this time the difficulty is two and Mecklen will continue to assist I will go ahead and roll for him well since I earned back uh, since we earned back momentum with that roll I might as well spend another one yeah, yep. go for it and Mecklen has earned one success to assist you. Oh, oh no. no. No, sorry, that's complication range has been set to two. Oh, yeah, there. you you are That okay was there. 19. Ooh. Okay, so I'm fine. Ooh, okay. Sorry, yep. I just Ooh, forgot brilliant. to change all the things back to the defaults. Yep, yep, so that is okay. Uh, for those on the log, uh, that is indeed, um, while it appears that Dr. Lambeth has rolled two successes and a complication, uh, that zero there, uh, as those will see in the log, is a 19 um so it is not a uh a, like we did not spend any threat in order to increase the complication range and there is no outside factor that would naturally increase that so uh yes that does uh, well it doesn't count as a success it 
definitely doesn't count as a complication. So you are all good. Um, but yes, with that, you score three successes. Uh, you get the point of momentum back. And Doctor, you may once again roll the uh, seven challenge dice for the uh, for the work track there. Okay. Okay, so that is three, four, five, six points of work uh, on the work track. Uh, resisted, I believe, still by two, so that would uh, go down to four. That still puts you up to uh, 11 points. It's just a little shy of a uh, of the successes that you need um, in order to beat this, but it is moving along. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I will say that uh, at least partly to, I guess, reflect the um, the breakthrough that you've already had, it is starting to spit back some results for you now, uh, Doctor. In particular, um, it is starting to rule out things that you had already decided weren't uh, part of this. Like, there's no signs of... Um, there's no signs in particular of like uh, the presence of any known virus or pathogens. Um, it still needs to confirm that there's like no signs of anything that it would recognize as a virus or pathogen that they hadn't previously identified, but the, it's at least starting to screen out those preliminary elements now. Um uh, so I guess uh, if yeah. you would like, you may roll one more task just to finish out the work track here. It'll still be difficulty two. Yeah, all right. Um, Go ahead and use one more if you want. We, yes, because we got it back, so... Yep. Okay. And uh, the doctor will... Uh, Dr. Mecklen will assist you one more time. So no successes from him there, but you still scored the two successes necessary to uh, meet the difficulty of the task. Go ahead and give me a, another roll on the work track. Another seven. Yep. All right, so that is... Five. Two. Yep, five. Yeah. Uh, and even resisted by two, that uh, does give you uh, four points so that finishes out the work track which automatically leads to a breakthrough um, if you would like you can spend a point of momentum to, uh, to basically cut through the resistance and what that would allow you to do in this case is uh, <laughs> it would allow you to take on the, uh, it would give you the full five points of work that you performed, and in doing so, that would unlock the third breakthrough. Yeah, yeah, that seems like a good investment. Yep. If everyone's okay with that. Yep. Got it. All right, so with that, you score the remaining uh, breakthroughs in order to complete the work track. Um, so the device be... Uh, the medical equipment that you and Dr. Mecklen are working with uh, continues to analyze the blood samples. Um, and it starts giving you more readings that suggest, uh, or that help to narrow things down. It indeed identifies no signs of any unusual um, activity that suggests any sort of bacteria, virus, or other pathogen in that sense. There's further, um, there are signs of the toxicity that you are already aware of from certain bits of a uh, particularly dilithium exposure um, and possibly a few other mineral compounds that might have had toxic effect. It would mostly be the dilithium in some trace quantities. What you are noticing, though, is that there are other environmental uh, categories here, or rather 
elevated levels of certain compounds. Most prominently, there seems to be um, signs of an increase in selenium in the uh, blood samples here. Oh shit! <laughs> so what? Do, what do I? What would I know about that? Other than just like, does that explain the all the symptoms? <clears throat> well, the you do know that when it comes to selenium, uh, in terms of humans, it does manifest as uh, it can manifest in some cases if it reaches uh, toxic levels. Um, selenosis generally causes like a lot of uh, it would account for fatigue, lethargy, uh, weakening of like motor skills. Um, Mm -hmm. sort of trouble in the extremities and even um, it could cause a number of chronic illnesses here um, for the Nausicans if it's uh, given differences in physiology it's not entirely unexpected that there might be some further problems I mean it's it's known that uh, consumption there can also in humans cause in some cases uh, like bro uh, like it can affect respiratory function in different ways okay so also that... key ingredient in head and shoulders and can be lethal to a <laughs> <laughs> in low to doses meet your, meet your weird species <laughs> in low doses it can be uh it, it is uh, tell you what, if you'd like to expend a point of uh, momentum here, then you could ask a uh, you could ask a question about this. Yeah, I I'd like to do that and just ask what what there is here that I would have high amounts of selenium in it. Selenium. And is are there is. It, has someone just been overdosing on head and shoulders? Like, well, I mean, selenium is also naturally found in numerous types of food, uh, particularly uh, like on Earth. There's definitely decent amounts of it in terms of uh, like most animal products as well, or and mm -hmm. other sort of uh, high protein type things, beans, nuts, that sort of. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, selenium also is known to be uh, used for um, in small doses it can also be a uh, it does have benefits essentially um, are the it can it's considered an antioxidant it does have some effects at low doses that help promote general bits of health that can uh, generally help to make one more resistant to certain types of cellular damage or um, some infections. Like cellular kind of... damage you might get from dilithium poisoning mm -hmm. and stuff, or... That is definitely a... Uh, there's a distinct Who's possibility it? that... Uh, Something like that could protect. Not to think that, I and mean, my current hypothesis is going to be that it's in their food, and that someone, some higher up corporate person, has gone right. We need to give people some more of this chemical to improve productivity, and the dosages hasn't haven't been correct, or there's like, you know, people have been they've run out of other food and so everyone's just having extra doses of the stuff that's laced with the selenium um, would i i guess the thing to do now would be to try and find the cause and just to let people know i guess i can just talk to dr metlin they have a high, the hydroponics thing there yeah. mm. um, are you are you talking aloud with any of this or like are you yeah he's gonna um at this point he's gonna bring up right there okay so it looks like we've got some kind of selenium um elements in here which 
at low quantities can actually be a benefit to health, but at higher quantities like this can cause all kinds of problems that match up with the ones we've been seeing. So I think this is our culprit. This would have been picked up on the fil yeah, this would have been picked up on the environmental systems if it had been in the atmosphere. Uh, what do you what do you think? Are we dealing with what ingestion or that's what I'd assume. Um I mean because there are there are health benefits in low doses, I can see some someone thinking it'd be a good idea to stick that in the food and maybe some logist some communication issues go awry and go awry and people don't talk to people like they're supposed to or shipments get missed or extra shipments get added and people end up overdosing. The the comments play out uh, it, like you can kind of see it in the parts of um, Dr. Mecklen's face that are exposed from the respirator uh, as his eyes dart back and forth for a moment. Oh, those Kefarian bastards. Or the, maybe it's Tellarite bastards. Either way. The, what it, oh... If it's if that's the way it's coming in, then those are the most likely people to go for. Uh, I, well, we're not this might be. I mean, it's your call, but this might be one of the cases where it's best to let Starfleet handle this. We can come in from a uh, a more neutral position. All right. Well, you you tell your Starfleet, but, but I'm I've got to tell Hogel all about this too. Yeah, I'm certainly not going to stop you. And uh, with that... Uh, tell Starfleet right now? <laughs> yep. So, uh, let's see, yeah. If, would you like the chance to talk this through with characters, or would you like to say that this info gets relayed to... Um, let the info get relayed to uh, Aegis and anyone who needs to know... Uh, I kind of by word would I would like well uh, let's talk through it we'll, 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 yeah. we'll say that that's been told um, yes but... so I don't need to just repeat yeah. everything that's been said again um, but from my understanding just it's a concentrated in selenium that's in, the, in some sort of system that has now been consumed or imbibed in some manner uh, mm -hmm. either through air or uh, stomach right GM. Yeah. Yeah. Is the colonist doctor there with you? Doctor? Yep. Dr. Mecklen's here. Um, I think he might just have left to go talk to Catch Copeland. him. No. I'm fixing to go somewhere. He's, Dr. Mecklen, he's, he's still here, don't worry. Dr. Mecklen. If, just to make sure that this thing doesn't get out of hand, could I accompany you? Very well, but you... Uh, who are you again? I am Colonel uh, Sharp, the captain of the uh, SS Aegis. Oh, oh, great. The the Starfleet. The, I guess we'll see what the agenda's all about now. Fine. Bring an EV suit. And don't eat the food! Thank you for advice, Doctor. I'll be there in half hour. Because out of character, last thing we need is a fucking riot. Yep. <laughs> or something else. Yep. So, uh, Doc, anything else you want to do right now? Uh, I think... I mean, I guess just get as if there's some... I'd probably mostly just wait for the captain if he can get in touch with Saral and relay any information he's got and see if Saral might be able to get a lead on where the selenium's coming in through. Well, let's let's follow up and see what's going on with Saral for right now. So, uh, <clears throat> let us uh, cut away for... Uh, during the time that uh, you finished setting up the tent and started working on this, 
the everyone's favorite wayward Vulcan, and uh, the recently introduced specialist Leighton, a very stocky engineering specialist, um, stocky and uh, heavily bearded, have been, I suppose uh, you were waiting on card and signal, if memory serves. Sorrel? Come again? Sorry? You were waiting for Cardin to signal when last we checked? Or uh, was there anything else you were wanting to do? I think so. I couldn't think of anything else to do because we checked all the filters and everything on 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 this end of the, the environmental line. Indeed so. All right. So um, you and the specialist have been waiting for a... Uh, waiting for a signal here, um, and sure enough, that comes uh, very, uh, very shortly. Um, or your, uh, I think, if memory serves, uh, had you given him one of the Starfleet communicators or a personal communication device? I gave him my own, and uh, like the particular frequency we are to communicate on. And I think Leighton also kind of wanted to rig it, that if he tries any funny business with it, it kind of stops working. Uh, yeah. Okay. If, 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 it, if it's, it stays within that frequency, and anybody who does, if he tries to modify or whatever, it just will break. Okay, now... Allow me to pose this to you. Um, if someone were to hypothetically work with that, would that would you consider that an adjustment of a? Uh, if someone were to try a task with something, would you consider that an increase in difficulty or a complication range? Um, I think it'd be a complication range. Okay. I think I rolled pretty high with that too, if I do believe. So. Um... I will allow for a range of, uh, let's say, three in order to, yeah. uh, like, for a complication there. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, your communicators chirp um, at this point. Whichever one of you wants to take that first. Um, I'm yeah. I'm with Mr. Roll. Mr. Roll's in charge. Yeah, just click it on. Yes. Oh. Mr. Sorrell, uh, there is a uh, there is a storage unit very close to the mine entrance. If you would care to meet with me very shortly, then I would be able to. Uh, I believe I can supply the diversion that you need. Uh, may I ask one question, though? Of course. <laughs> aware that you have been away for some time I am wondering just in, uh, for precautionary measure I must ask how is your technique in terms of uh, a pro uh, in terms of nerve pressure I think my instructors called it barely acceptable hmm. but within institute standards whatever it's that's worth. I have the talent, but I'm not sure how good I'm, I'm with it. <laughs> Very well. We will, uh, we will simply, uh, I suppose, uh, we will have the opportunity to test that, potentially. Uh, Cardin out. And so we're all out. Yep, with that, uh, let's see. Cardine is going to attempt a roll here. And let's see. I think this would qualify as daring and engineering, not his strong suits, but he will try anyway. Oh, wow. And he. Let's see. So that would be a succeed at cost. I will elect it since he scores just a little shy. I think of the it would have been a difficulty three roll to do what he's attempting. I will give you a point of momentum to reflect this. Nice. So. Uh, yes. 
you start making your way towards uh, the uh, towards an edge of the uh, habitation wall where uh, Seral, based on the sensor scans you've taken, the rough map you have of the place, this is uh, you're approaching essentially the great rock wall on this end of the uh, habitation, where on the other side is essentially the mining and uh, sort of environmental equipment, a lot of uh, like sort of other machinery, things that are mostly run by Jogas. Uh, the Nausikans only operate here as part of the uh, mining staff, from what you've gathered. Um, over in this area, there are several prefab structures, a lot of like shacks, basically. Um, most of these actually seem to reflect more uh, Jogas construction than anything else. Um, and around, uh, not too far off from the structure that you are in, you see what appears to be a fairly large uh, cargo door type uh, structure uh, with I would say two or three uh, Tellarite guards. Uh, these are relatively tall for Tellarites. Uh, that I'd say that they roughly probably match uh, Specialist Layton's height um, and are about as brisk of a build. So these are definitely a tanky bunch. The, the Tellarites don't scrimp on their contractors. Um, but they, from this distance, you can tell that... They are armed and uh, fairly well, basically. Of course they are. It would be way too boring otherwise. Well, you know, Nausicaan Station, standing out uh, like in the open, they probably figured it's a good idea. Quasi-illegal Tellarite presence. Yep. Be anyway, fine. Uh, the, the signal that um, Cardian gave you suggests that there's a essentially a like three or four buildings away from that entrance is a small single story shack of sorts or one of the prefab modules there's no security uh, outside the door and uh, the controls seem set to basically have a simple open close type setup Rather limited number of buttons. This is seemingly very low security. I mean, he said in the storage room? Yep. Then let's go. Okay. You enter the storage module and the. Uh, it is reasonably well illuminated, uh, somewhat low lighting. This place hasn't seen much use in a while and it seems that there are like numerous crates and uh, crates barrels and all manner of other things just stacked around there are enough footpath er, there's enough space for you to travel between this such that uh, you could walk abreast with uh, Leighton and still have a bit of space to either side of you um, but not much more than that it's very cramped quarters uh, but there is no sign of anyone else at present. Okay, I guess um, I would take Leighton and go to somewhere close by the door, but that's not like immediately obvious when someone comes in that they're that, that we are there. Are you, are you just pulling him to a side, or are you trying to communicate with him? Um, just kind of tapping him on the shoulder and communicating. Just okay. pointing, let's go over there. Yep, gotcha. Nonverbal communication. Okay. Um, Leighton, is there anything else that you are wanting to do at this particular point? Nope. All right. So the the two of you set, uh, like step to one side and begin to uh, just wait for the... Um, Rather, wait for something to happen. There's no signs of Cardin in this area. Um, no signs of anyone else. And uh, Do we hear anything from the outside? Uh, 
not a whole lot. Some of that being muffled by the um, environmental suit that you are wearing. Um, the I get it. I suppose that you would have uh, such options with your suit that you could have it set to allow for ambient sound to reasonably pass through. Um, there'd be that setting. There'd be basically an internal speaker that would allow for a comm system. Um, as you've used to chat either with the ship or with yourselves more covertly. Another beat passes. And another. And another. And then the door opens. And stepping through are two Nausicaan guards. Um, both of uh, very... Uh, very sort of uh, stocky, uh, or like husky builds, uh, rifles kind of at an alert carry, so not up, but in a position where they could very quickly raise them. Uh, faces can mostly covered by a mix of helmet and respirator, such that it's mostly just their eyes that are visible. Uh, visible. And just behind them... Uh, is a uh, is a hooded figure you recognize as a Vulcan man you've encountered once before. They start looking no. around. You you're sure you 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 said that you saw uh, some unsavory characters uh, about here. And, uh, yes, I don't. Uh, I did not see them exit in the time that I had. Uh, at which I had left. Um, they're going to take a look around. Do the two of you attempt to hide? Um, I'm going to try to create a distraction. What is the... Uh, can, I, can, I, can I roll an insight check? What's the plan here? Oh. Because I'm not entirely sure I'm picking up what he's putting down. I think, he, I think we just got fucking backstabbed is the thing. I mean, there are many options. <laughs> Well, first I, I will ask, are you attempting to, um, are you attempting hide to hide, uh, hide, attack, otherwise engage them in some way? Uh, like, what, what's your inclination? What's the layout again? Can you repeat that? Repeat it. Uh, so the, the cargo compartment, uh, it, this is basically a storage compartment. There are crates and barrels scattered about through here. There's, it's wide enough that or that uh, there are like there are several paths that you could kind of take around um, that like would allow the two of you in your environmental suits to stand with uh, like next to each other with a bit of, uh, some clearance space for you to stretch your arm out um, to either side. Uh, I'd say that there's probably like rows around here it, like there are rows that allow you to turn off and also walk between those so let's say uh, i'm trying to conceptualize an exact thing we'll we'll call this roughly single story but close in size to like one of the cargo bays maybe like two-thirds the uh overall length and width of something and with things stacked up very high this question is, it's a glorified storage locker, basically, or like long-term storage place that you might rent out. Question. And, yeah. Um, when it comes to these Nausicans, are they also unmasked? Are they also uh, there are there are no Nausicans with them, but it's just the Tellarites. Oh, just Tellarites? Okay. Yep. You, these are Jogus guards. Am I, am, I, am I tripping, or did you say Nausicaan guards? Yeah, I, I, did, I did think you said Nausicans. I misspoke then. These are Tellarites, actually. The, right. the Jogas, cool, 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 specifically. Cool. I mean, this would play closer to the distraction thing again. That's why I'm on the inside check, because... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, was I backstabbed? Am I bleeding? Or what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I guess I'm we would hide to... by default, I think. I'm going to... Uh... I'm going to use my mechanics here. I'm going to, uh, or rather, Layton's going to like fumble around to his uh, utility belt, grab a uh, a chemical, like an aerosol can, as it were, one that he knows is extremely pugnant if 
uh, and not great for you know uh, your sense of smell or a brain for too much exposure. Um, and I want to basically like twist it enough to where the cap could, or the the seal could almost be broken before flinging it and let it just burst. Uh, I uh, will note these Tellarite guards are wearing respirators. Are they? Mm. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, you could throw it on the other side of them so they turn that way. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm 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 just gonna turn it, and um, I, I really don't care about this guy. So I really care about our, our Cardine. So it's still gonna be pugnant for him. Um, yeah, I'll just. Uh, roll it or uh, chuck it uh, on the other side and try to get them distracted, essentially, so we can have a chance to give us, basically give us an advantage. Okay, if you would like to buy the advantage there, I could give you that for two momentum if you like, or I suppose you could, there is a create advantage task, which would be basically uh, it requires two successes. Uh, in this case, I think that the attribute and discipline would be daring and uh, security is probably a little more relevant here. But I suppose you are using your engineering toolkit for this, so I would allow for yeah. engineering. So uh, I can allow engineering um, jerry rigging. <laughs> uh, not quite here. I think. Oh, all right. Um, and are you I, electing I, to increase the difficulty for them to spot you, or to um, increase their complication range? Uh, difficulty to spot spot us. Okay. Um, but I, I, I kind of motion with the, the canister at him, at, at uh, Saral, just to make sure that he's okay with the idea. I mean, you seem to have a plan, so go. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Yep. Let's do the shit. Okay, that is one lower than the necessary successes you need to score two for that um if you would like right. you could succeed at cost uh, specifically sure, I'll give a threat give okay a threat. i will take a point of threat and that will increase their difficulty to spot uh Saral, you said that you were attempting to hide as well um well I, but it was my initial idea um but if he starts a distraction um, I would just assume that that works because otherwise we're like fucked either way. So I would like slink behind the nearest guard who's turning away from me and try to uh, nerve pinch him. Okay. So let us see how this goes then. I have no idea how this goes. Ooh. Oh, the guards I like, score... I like it. I like it really much. <laughs> the guards score a complication. Uh, they do not notice you and... Yes, uh, Saral, you come in. Uh, go ahead and give me, I believe that for a nerve pinch, this would be daring plus science. Daring. Fear, science. Uh... And the difficulty on this task would can be... I, can I argue that I have a troubleshooting focus and that's basically... A, I'm shooting trouble? <laughs> <laughs> You're not truly shooting anything, and you've admitted that your technique is only passive. Se so sensor I... operations, because nerves and you know sense. No, I'm, I'm, I'm shutting up. <laughs> it was a good try. Uh, how many? How many successes do I need? One. One success. I got two. Two successes. Uh, you come in and move for the nerve pinch. Uh, go ahead and. If I see him doing that, I'm going to uh, go around the second guy and just press the feedback on his respirator so that way he gets carbon dioxide. And, well, there's two of them I should note first. Um, well, I know. He's grabbing one. I'm getting the other one. Oh. I was... uh, let... oh go ahead. 
first, let's let me allow for Saral to resolve this. Uh, go ahead yeah. and do you have the nerve pinch uh, talent? That, or rather, do you have nerve pinch entered under your character sheet? I forget whether uh, we added that. There is one, but it says tells me three dice, and I think because I think it ta it's taking the uh, security by default. Yeah, we added a little uh, bit to that in order to make it work, so that it's perfectly fine there. Um, go, uh, you may go ahead and roll damage, and that should come out properly. I th think that is correct. That is so. That will be five points of stress, and that will be considered intense. Um, as the first guard goes down, um, the other one was turned away, but he starts moving around immediately to brace you. He sees uh, Leighton moving towards him, and in his own moment of panic, he proceeds to try and level his own... Uh, he tries to level his... Uh, like particle rifle in your direction but not before Cardine is also able to place a nerve pinch and not quite land it in the way they'd wanted to it's enough that the Tellarite is in considerable pain and momentarily move it like moves off um, but yes you are this this moment of surprise is out of the way. You are now in combat, and uh, Leighton, because of uh, the not quite connected nerve pinch here, you still have the moment to act. Cool. I'm just going to eject uh, every chemical. Basically, press the button that ejects that re reverses the intake and makes it an outtake instead. Um, so I'm just bursting whatever whatever's in that tank right back into his face. Or his nostrils and mouth. Um, Although so... I think the respirator doesn't so much. It's not something that has a tank. Oh, it's a filter. So much... Yeah, the filter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, um, yes. I'm sorry. That's my own. No, no, no. It's fine. Um, I'm just using another aerosol can and just like stuff it into the respirator and just put pull the trigger. Oh dear, that that just sounds deeply unpleasant so uh give me i guess a daring and engineering role as you try to shove an aerosol can into this guy's filter environmental systems <laughs> oh man that that's terrible but it counts <laughs> he gets away with this i'm <laughs> scandalized only one though i'm ashamed all right. well, let's see whether the guard can actually um, do something about this here. He, I suppose, could contest with daring and security. Uh, yeah, no, he's it, the moment you try to go for his face, um, he's going to bring up his rifle to block it and uh, sort of knock the it, knock the can away um, because he's somewhat out of position or like he's more oriented towards a melee he's just going to try and take another swing at you with daring and security trying to club you with his rifle mm -hmm. nope that's that's not good for him he scored he, zero he successes goes, on that he go he goes for center mass except uh i'm a short dude so you're right, but, he goes, he goes for... you're comparable in height oh right yeah we are okay yep yeah. Uh, that being said, because this is a melee attack that he is attempting, you get to roll as well with daring and security. Uh, as the worst roll, but sure. Let's go. Uh, no, I'm not focused on this. <laughs> Equally, <laughs> not great. Yep. It's a it's a bad like attempt at a swing and uh, you know, like swing and a miss on his part and you just you're not like prepared for that type of melee attack uh let's see Saral, would you wish to act or would you prefer to pass off to cardine here um i guess i'm kind of having like a half slump guard that i'm holding up because i i kind of i thought i caught him when he's um was going down and I was hoping the other one would also go down, so I'm standing like with a guard in front of me, the other one turning my way, so I'm passing to Cardin, just yep. hoping <laughs> that sure. he can complete his uh, yep. knockdown. 
Yep. Uh, Cardine pulls out, uh, seems to pull out a uh, object of some sort, a small cylindrical device, um, and with near imperceptible movement of a uh, uh, of his thumb, it rapidly extends out to something much longer and uh, like it's very clearly some sort of a metallic uh, quarter staff, which he goes in for a. Uh, an efficient swing and uh, attack to try to counter here. Um, so let's see, that will be daring and security on this one. Two successes. Meeting the guard who rolls. Only one success, so that will gain you back a point of momentum here. I should go ahead and start dealing some so there was a there was one from an earlier role and then yes you succeeded at one other task earlier that would also apply so i'll just give you two points of momentum just at it so that we are keeping up properly um so cardine will uh basically thrust the staff at such an angle as to kind of catch the guard between the arms and um sort of find an, a proper point to leverage the rifle away from him. He is going to attempt the disarm action, which, let's see, I thought there was a separate thing in the melee list here. That may be something I have missed. Uh, okay, we'll say that uh, for this until the gym can find something better, I will shift this instead to um, a proper strike. So Guardian will just roll damage in an effort to incapacitate him. Non-lethally, of course. Okay, yeah, that is five points of damage, so that will be enough to do an injury uh, as he basically uses the staff to it like lever away the rifle sending it flying and then bringing it uh bringing the opposite end kind of in an oh it like a uh, a strike it like that kind of comes from above essentially swinging one end of the staff uh, in an arc above him and bringing it just down on the tellerite's neck um Landing the, uh, basically landing it in the place that, say, uh, you know, TNG era tracker, particularly DS9, where people would land the double palm punch that always incapacitated people um, for reasons. So the Tellarite will go down after that. Well, I must apologize. My, I'm afraid that my own technique appears to be slightly rusty. So, uh, what do we do with these? Just having like the the, the unconscious Telluride, just like a, like a big toddler, just holding up underneath his arms. <laughs> oh. With uh, that nerve pin, should be adequate for the uh, for the time that we would need to infiltrate and continue our investigation here. However, it is uh, worth noting that the it is worth noting that uh, this uh, how shall I say this was meant in part to narrow our uh, narrow the obstacles to us, but also provide a bit of an opportunity. One that I uh, well, you will forgive my bluntness in noting, but uh, your compatriot here is actually uniquely suited to assist us in this regard. Chosen by the chief engineer for his skills. Yeah. Mm. Chosen by the Vulcan for his size. <laughs> <laughs> the it uh, while neither you nor I could logically uh, pose as he just a, grabs uh, he just grabs one of the one of the tell right and starts. Start doing what he's dressing. Yep. 
Uh, hmm. I, I was I was thinking maybe we could stage that they went in here and the crate fell down, knocked them out, and everything else would be just them trying to justify their failure. But how do we explain an undressed guard with some cursed clothes missing? Um, well, very alcohol. simply, very simply, the uh, the guards would not think to traverse this area, nor would they have any uh, means of being able to call out on this. As far as they are aware. There is a uh, there is some sort of broken. Um, well, most would uh, just understand it to be some sort of a fear, uh, interference, uh, unusual uh, communications glitch to which they cannot identify the source. That is all except for these two guards, whom I informed uh, I uh, that I had seen two suspicious characters uh, entering this site and that the uh, a communications uh, the communications interference had occurred uh, in a time proximate to their entry thus creating the suspicion that uh, they were behind the jamming signal at any rate the other guards cannot be raised and those in the mines are going to have greater difficulty uh, reaching out to the station it will inevitably uh, say near a shift change create some issues but at present, the guard site is, uh, rather, the entrance to the mines is understaffed, and they are not likely to depart on the. Uh, they're not likely to depart and uh, send for help or be a, uh, or do anything. Certainly, um, not when they have the passage of uh, a Tellerite guard gesturing to uh, Leighton. <laughs> or one that has the appearance of being a Tellarite guard, identifying themselves as coming from the headquarters on the station, and saying that they've been permitted to allow uh, observers from... Uh, uh, some impartial observers to uh, inspect the mining site. Ah... Uh. Okay, Felix thinks he hasn't thought this entirely through and there will be problems, but I think Soral is uh, an acceptance of this plan. <laughs> um, how long do I think will the guards stay knocked out with, an, with a nerve pinch or being punched in the face with a metal quarter staff? Like, law of convenience or inconvenience? Um, I would suspect this airs a bit more towards a convenient amount of time. It's definitely not going to look good eventually. Um, granted, you could probably buy yourself some more time if you, say, um, upon leaving, found a way to break a console here and make their entry more difficult, or rather their egress. Question. Yep. Um... We are in a storage locker, right? Or storage storage room, right? Yes. Um, this is a mining place. So there's probably a lot of chemicals. Um, I am sure that there is a chemical here that would make an afternoon go away pretty quickly. Uh, could I like I leave that open or something like that to make it look like they were using it? Like they could feel like they're using it. Um. Uh, you could do so. I do think that comes with actual risks to the Tellarites, because I imagine anything in here in what seems to be a fairly confined space, uh, I mean, I guess this module has, a, a, like, it's con a, it's not um, completely air-gapped, or it's not fully sealed at this point, because they, you know, that would it wouldn't make sense to have everything here operate on its own uh, life support system. Sure. But... Uh, I it just I'm just trying to think of like ways of explaining explaining away, uh, you know, why they're knocked out and whatnot. Uh, it's because the guards decide to have some free time. I mean, one of the uh, uniforms is missing. I think that's the problem part. If it comes down to an explanation, oh, that's true. Yeah. And either we yeah. we get away around that or we ignore it and just. Um, I would suggest if we leave, I just pop open the, the the maintenance hatch of the door panel and just pull out one of the connectors. Then it's just like the door just won't open unless you go like into the. I'm gonna um, use my kit and the uh, parts of it. I'm gonna use my kit and spot weld the door a little bit too. Now I would have I would have said it like literally as like just like a, uh, not exactly malfunction but something non-obvious. Oh yeah, yeah. 
Fair enough. You can do that. Yeah, just maybe, I don't know. Maybe something weird happened. It's like, this is already weird and dangerous, but eh, Sorrel is fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, then uh, then, then I'll help, help Sorrel uh, find a part that we can uh, break or uh, un untether, as it were. Okay. Um, I guess if you would like one more roll, basically, to create this advantage, we'll call it another... Um, <clears throat> Difficulty to roll, this can be control and engineering. Finally, a one that I can actually use. I um, would love to. Uh... Emergency repairs, because it's reverse. Do, do you want to lead, or should I? I'll lead. Okay. Uh, emergency repairs might not quite qualify, but I would allow for jury rigging. Okay. Emergen emergency unrepairs. Three. Uh, what what um, are emergency repairs except for combat? <laughs> or sabotage, And rather. one more. For good measure and more momentum. Yes, yes, yes. So let me make sure this is up to date for all those watching here. Uh, yep, that is three successes from Special Slayton and one success from Mr. Serral. So you only needed the two in order to create the advantage. That means you will net two points of momentum. Yeah. And then just, like, make sure the guards, like, don't choke on their own tongues or something. Like, you know, just, yep. like, put them in a safe resting position and just let them uh, be unconscious in safety. Yep. Uh, I guess one other question, uh, Special Slayton. The, the scheme does require you to not all uh, in donning the Tellerite uniform, you do need to uh, take uh, like remove the EV suit. Are you trying to hide that in any particular way? Um, yeah, I will. Uh, he will do his best to close his eyes, close his mouth, and uh, just don't on the rebreather instead. Okay, you'll. I guess we'll say you can find a cargo container with which to. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I, I'll just put it. Sorry, yeah, I'll, I'll just put it. I'll put it in the cargo. One of the cargo. Containers. Can we can we put it outside of the room? If you try to lock them in the room, it would be yeah, yeah. not good if the yeah. <laughs> if yeah, the the yeah. spare uniform is in the room. <laughs> yeah. So. Also, we haven't been informed that it's apparently selenium that's causing the health issues, and we are still concerned about bacteria or viral oh, I know. infections. Right? That's, that's why he excellent, was like, excellent. Yeah, he fantastic. Like, for, for, this, for this whole shit, he's like, okay, gotta switch over to switch over mass. No, I, I support this 100%. <laughs> yep, yep. This is the plan, and he can go to the doctor immediately afterwards. Yep. So, uh, yeah. A few minutes pass whilst you... Um, Find a, a container that you can remove from the place if so desired uh, to hide the EV suit. Uh, you have the guards arrayed as comfortably as you think they can. One of them probably has a little bit of a chill now since they are out of their uh, uniform. There's, uh, We'll say the Tellarites have the, the tasteful um, two-piece, uh, like, a different colored sort of underwear, but precisely the setup that the Enterprise uh, crew has, or that Starfleet yeah. crews of the air have. Of sorts. Yeah. yeah. Um, we but, also we also set them down where like there's like a barrel tastefully blocking the lower section um, from the camera view. Anyway, but yes. With that, uh, special Slayton, uh, obviously. Um, you know, you can tell uh, it's still him under there, but from a distance, if you, and maybe more so if you squint or don't like make sustained direct eye contact, you might be able to guess that he's a Tellarite, or you could be forgiven for mistaking him for one. The beard definitely helps. That is at least partially poking through the uh, through the respirator. He just gives huh? like an irritable. Uh, That's the spirit. Yep. 
Well, I must. Uh, I will say, I apologize that uh, I must further delay returning your personal communications device, but it is slightly more in our interest that it remain here and uh, create the jamming signal for the time being. Do you have any objection? Hmm. Might report is stolen later. Uh, no. Let's keep going. All right. So the three of you leave the uh, cargo, uh, leave the cargo uh, unit, and start moving towards the mine entrance. Uh, there is one guard still milling about there, rifle on an alert carry status, and uh, he hasn't taken notice of you or where you are coming from. But when he looks up and sees, oh, uh, oh, what, what, what's all this about? <laughs> Well, we are investigating the situation on board of the station. And we discovered a dangerous level of dilithium particles in the air. Uh, and as to the source of these dilithium particles, we have excluded all places available to us. None. Don't need to explain. It's none of your business. Words from the top escorting him out that way he uh, the tellerite looks to it looks from Saral to you late and is like, oh <laughs> wait wait you're saying that we're uh, we're letting these full uh, we're letting these uh let me uh, hey you're Vulcan too we're letting the Vulcans uh, through here you sure You calling me a liar? I, uh, I wouldn't plan on doing that. I'm just a little, uh, little bit, a uh, little bit confused over the situation. Uh, I, I'm I taking don't to... understand either, but I don't get paid to understand. Just follow orders. Uh, you're right. We don't get paid enough for any of this shit here. All right. He just, he just grunts and nods. <laughs> yep. They just, uh, Saral, Cardine, uh, Saral and Cardine stand there as he'll these just, two people he, just grumble back and forth. He'll just, uh, shove the, the two Vulcans keep going. Hey, uh, he, uh, easy on the, uh, the guests. He chooses the word very carefully. Um, Jogus has got a reputation to maintain, or, you know that all that nonsense there. Mm. He just nods and just gestures with his rifle towards uh, in the direction of the door for the two Vulcans. Yep. As you move through the doors uh, into the mining or into the corridors between the mine and the habitation, it is probably at this time that a general communication has gone out on the Starfleet frequencies. One that you are jammed from receiving about the increase in or about the heightened uh, presence of selenium uh, in the uh, that are detected in the Noskin's bloodstream. Um, so that kind of brings us up to more or less a present time. Uh, so let's see, we are, I'm actually thinking here whether this would be a good point to put things off for now, because we are just about uh, half past what is relatively uh, three o'clock for me, but this is basically two and a half hours in, so maybe it would be better to go ahead and put a close to this for now, unless anybody wants to do anything else right now. Um, I just wanted to organize engineering teams to address like the different things that need to be done. You don't on need the to organize them. You just gotta give me the list for the moment. Yeah. Well, organize. Get them ready to start. Get the parts all organized. Did you want me to start fabricating or hold off on that? Hold off on that. I just need the. I just need the laundry list. 
okay, I'll put together the laundry list, deliver it to her, but I'm going to have teams broken up and ready to go. Okay? Nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, so does anybody else want to do anything scene-wise? Um, Cardine. We've been, I've, I've had Patel look into it. Um, how, how has, has his progress been for that? Patel is, uh, since I'd say that the, this episode here, are kind of, uh, roughly the events that have been going on corresponded to everyone's same amount of time. He is starting to look up more information. So, all right. Um, I would, uh, I would designate uh, Shira to help out Patel. Uh, if she has any security clearances regarding um, Andorian intelligence, that'd be nice. Uh, if not, she could probably know a few, one or two things that uh, we might be overlooking that could be easy traps or uh, code words for uh, Vulcans that we're not aware of yet. But I want Shira to help out Patel. Yeah. I figure out a whole, whole thing about Cardine. Okay. Well, I, I think it sounds like this is going to be more things that would be better for a next session. Yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking about it as, a, as since it was the last of what I wanted going on. Yep. Um, so with cool. that, uh, I would think that this is actually a good place to uh, cut things off for now and to leave off the... Uh, the session here so uh we will come back next week with one more episode of this we with actually with the progress that's been made it we might be able to wrap this up uh next session we will see how that goes however um so for everyone that is catching this on the archive i'd like to say thank you for stopping by um if you ever want to catch these sessions live we are running on uh, twitch.tv slash GM and the Great Barrier. The link's in the description. Uh, we run these 1 p.m. on every Saturday at Eastern Standard Time. That should be 6 p.m. Uh, GMT. Uh, so it's friendly for anyone in the audience that might be more inter- that might be situated in more of a Eurozone time frame. Uh, certainly at least helps our players a little bit more. Um, but yeah, uh, otherwise, I think this is where we will leave off with you. So have a good rest of your day, and we'll see you next time.